Watts was just a little bit better and managed to retain their titles in what was another excellent match for the IWL. Now, Chimera Watts won with, and I'm testing this out here, so if it doesn't fly, well, shit, you can't try, you don't learn it's a failure until you try it. They finished them off with what I'm going to call the Watts Up Chimera. See, because I worked in Watts and Chimera, and it's up because it's a choke slam, and then Chimera brings them down with the backstabber. Hopefully the video footage is explained this way fucking better than I'm doing. But it looks fucking fresh. It was so fresh that the crowd erupted simultaneously in a sound that sounded like, Aah! In fact, actually, it wasn't the whole crowd. It was just the guys to the left as men covered in mayonnaise. Oh. Yeah. Mayonnaise. Eh? 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 That is, that's just gross. <laughs> That is. That's just wrong. Yeah, I know, but um, they decided to heckle me the whole show because they thought they had a better web TV show than us. Oh, you mean their show? I fall asleep to it all the time. You know, seriously, we actually really do like ADTV. We just can't help but fuck with you because we're assholes. And that's where they, where they IW all. Our next match on the show was a confrontation between Justin Reich and Cawthorn. Now, why would these two large men be fighting each other? Well, Justin Reich is out of his fucking mind. And accordingly, he doesn't use the thing we like to call logic. He took great offense to the fact that Cawthorn, even though he's, well, a scary man beast, at heart is still a gentleman and chose to help Doom up after their cage match. Shook his hand, did, you know, the whole old school polite thing, you know? Nothing wrong with that, no shame. Pretty stand though. Well, Reich took offense and slammed uh, Cawthorn's head into a cage door. Well, when you slam a guy's head into a cage door, you're probably going to piss him off. So Reich's like, fine, I can totally kick his ass. I'm Justin Reich. Who's this asshole? Ladies and gentlemen, this asshole is Cast Iron Cawthorn. And, uh, well, nobody's going to teach that fucking guy a lesson unless it's chew, Cawthorn, chew. You can swallow after you chew at least three times so you don't choke, you big scary son of a bitch. God, I hope he doesn't hit me for these jokes. Anyway. Oh, man. And he doesn't like Juggalos, either. I'm not a Juggalo this guy, so if you're going to go after somebody first, you know, I mean, I, I, I love you, Jeff, but if it comes down to me, I'm totally going to sacrifice your ass. Nothing personal? Nothing personal. Awesome. Anyway, so Cawthorn is just, I mean, literally wailing on him. I mean, it looks like Clash of the fucking Titans. And uh, as if that isn't enough going on, remember our friend earlier from Joke with the crossface and people scream murder and I called it tasteless, which is really shocking by my standards? Yeah, Joke doesn't take that shit too kindly, so he comes out and starts beating the ever-loving tar out of Joseph Knox, throwing him around, whipping him into a fence on the outside, and doing, <coughs> excuse me, what was, well, uh, uh, a senton, thank you, Jesus Christ. It was like a, a can it was like a cannonball or Yeah, it was like a cannonball senton, straight into Knox, except, you know, Knox didn't have anywhere to go except chain link fence, so it was like a fucking train wreck. I mean, seriously, you should have been there. It's absolutely amazing. But at this point, everything is completely broken down. Order thrown out the window. I mean, just there's, there's crazy shit going on left to right. By the time I turn around from the freaking Knox joke fight, I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing Cawthorn walk away. And I'm really confused. Well, apparently, in all this chaos, just Reich using his newfound wealth, decided to invest in something. His own ass. He paid off Cawthorn. And well, ladies and gentlemen, Cawthorn is apparently buyable. So for whatever X amount of dollars in that briefcase, Cawthorn walked away. Resulting in what, I'm not 100% sure, I believe was a forfeit? Which means I think Justin Reich won. Or maybe it's a new one. Payoff. Victory by payoff. IWO first? Oh yeah. Only in IWO you'll see something like that. Alright, there we go ladies and gentlemen. We're pioneers. I wasn't confused. We're just innovating. Yeah, that's the ticket. And I'm sticking to it. Our semi-main event for Living Oscar was a three-way match featuring Johnny Suave, Willie Mack, and reigning Anarchy Champion Chris Evans to decide, well, who's going to keep the Anarchy Bell? Who is the better wrestler among the three? And, well, I'm sure they just were really honestly looking for an opportunity to slap each other. How'd this match come around, you ask? Well, if you go to IWRwrestling.com, which you should be doing, you would have seen Johnny Suave cut a promo on, weirdly enough of all things, Vic's cat. Why? Well, because I think maybe my boss was drunk, 
But even more than that, to present, uh, present Johnny with an interesting challenge. Can you cut a promo on Vic's Cat Jojo and make people give a shit? Jeff? No, but I really can honestly say that's almost like a Michael Vick moment. Except the cat survived. Oh yes, and I find that very offensive because that cat now has psychological damage now. Thank you, Suave. Gee, Suave, you fuck pussies up. How do you feel about that? Classy joke, I know. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> now, so okay, Vic goes fine. You got a promo on my cat. That's impressive enough. Bam! Match granted. Well... There's always a catch, because it's rustling. And Willie Mack called Vic. And, well, he told him two things. One, I want my fucking title back. And two, fuck you, I will hurt you if you don't give it to me. And, well, really, are we going to say no to Willie Mack? I mean, seriously. Did he, like, break into the house or to the office in the middle of the night and, like, hold Vic hostage? Okay, I don't know anything for certain, but let's leave it at this. I heard Suge Knight job. Vic got Suge Knighted. Ooh. Yeah. Are you calling Vic a Vanilla Ice? Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, if you understand that reference, in fact, Vic was Vanilla Ice, Willie Mac was Suge Knight, and there was a lot of screaming involved. Wow. Yep. Oof. I feel sorry for him on that one. <laughs> Scary. Now, back to the meat and taters. This match was absolutely phenomenal. <clears throat> DVD quality. In fact, honest to God, one of the, the many matches that very possibly would qualify for a word on SoCal Uncensored if you are so kind enough to ever consider our talents and contributions to the indie scene. Seriously, we've had some good shit recently. You should really check it out. Anyway, match had all sorts of spots. There was an electric chair drop. There was a swab atom bomb. I mean, Jesus Christ, there's so many spots. I can't... It was just... If, if you blinked, you missed something fresh. It, that's how good the match was, honest to God. So the end came when Willie Mack had Johnny Suave pinned, and I'm thinking, wow, Willie's going to get his title back. Awesome. But Chris Evans, well, Chris Evans is a dick. And being a dick, he used a shoehorn, or as I'm calling it, because I don't quite believe it's a shoehorn, his crotch device that he whips out of his junk region and terrifies the individuals, clocked Willie in the back of the head, and rolled him out of the way and pinned Suave for the 1-2-3, retaining his title. Chris Evans is still your champion, but seriously, how many more times can you do asshole stunts like this and get away with it? Pull the Randy Orton tactics, huh? <laughs> My god, he is the Randy Orton of IWL. Hmm. That's... bad? I think it's pretty good. Alright. Then it's good. I don't know what the fuck's going on anymore in the IWL. The bad guys are getting cheers. What kind of fucking parallel universe did I fall into? Our main event of the show featured the our World Heavyweight Champion Doom defending his title against SoCal veteran and frankly possibly one of the breakout stars of the indie scene, Marcus Wright, in a match that delivered top to bottom. I mean seriously, Marcus is a very, very talented veteran of the scene, and Doom, well, I mean, besides the fact he's a, you know, our homegrown boy, truly has the potential to be, you know, rookie of the year. I mean, he's not really a rookie, but rookie of the year as in Everyone else sees him for the first time? No? Ah, fuck you people. Little kids think he's the rock. Hey, that's something! <laughs> anyway, Jesus, I almost feel bad. Anyway, back to the match. The match was truly phenomenal. I mean, you had Marcus's phenomenal spots. I mean, really excellent back and forth action. But Doom reached deep down inside. And no, I'm not talking about his pants. I mean, when you reach into your soul and you pull out that last ounce of strength and hit the small package driver, which is not a joke of my end. Doom actually calls it that. Doom, seriously, I'm supposed to be the one that makes fun of you. Stop making fun of yourself. It's just sad. I mean, sad you're still Did you hear the Teen Wolf chants they were calling Doom? <laughs> I totally forget about that, but that was really funny, too. But anyway, as I said, Doom hits the small package driver and goes for the pin. The one, two, three, the big title retention. And it's never that fucking easy in wrestling, ever. You know who comes out? Cawthorn. You know why? Because Cawthorn has new priorities. He's paid. He's happy. What does that mean when you're paid and happy? You need a title. Because at the end of the day, the championship talks and that mutual respect bullshit walks. 
So at this point, Marcus and Cawthorn are just destroying Doom. It's just this side of Abu Ghraib prison up in that bitch. And it is just bad. And I'm thinking, man, if we don't do something soon, I'm going to need a fucking spatula to clean this guy up. Well, something does happen. LTP comes.